وبسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين السلام عليكم جميعا so welcome to the presentation about the stadium and central Doha crowd control so the fan fest will be inside the central Doha so Uh, in my lecture, I will not uh, consider the pandemic uh, instructions. Okay, I'll finish. I'll start again. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid Mursaleen. Assalamu alaikum jami'an and welcome to, the, uh, to this presentation about the stadiums and central Doha crowd control. Uh, in this lecture, I will not consider the pandemic uh, conditions by Uliana and present it. And I will also present the full capacity use of the World Cup um, uh, championship and also to uh, concentrate on the crowd movement and crowd control in the whole event, not specific inside the stadium, but in the whole event when all uh, 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 activities are running. So to my person, I am Salim al -Bosta and I am structural engineer and crowd management expert. Uh, I worked in uh, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Lebanon, and Jordanian, and now I am in Qatar uh, for, uh, to prepare uh, uh, for the World Cup 2022. In Saudi Arabia, I was responsible for the crowd movement for the pilgrims in the holy, space, holy places in Mecca. So, um, first of all, the challenge of uh, the operation and management of the crowd control. We have the inputs from uh, the FIFA with the uh, timetable, with the schedule, with the match schedules um, in uh, November and December, and with the for, for the stadiums cluster A and B. And we have also the kickoff uh, timetable uh, when it starts 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock and 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the evening. Uh, for, for the group stage and the another. We have also the input that we have to save 70% of the spectators arrival at the stadium one hour before the kickoff. And we have to clear the stadium within 30 minutes and to clear the last mile around the stadium within 90 minutes. So the host country inputs, of course, uh, for the, uh, mainly for the, uh, all other activities. Um, um, especially in the crowded public spaces, as you see here in the fan festes and gathering points and Kurnish, Katara, Sukwagif, parks and public transport hubs, metro and bus uh, stations, public viewing and malls festival. And also we have in additional the events or the, uh, from, from the residents, like the Indian groups are making a huge event with 20 or 30,000 people. So this is the planned uh, Katara, the planned uh, uh, FIFA fan fest uh, in the middle of in the middle of uh, the central Doha, as you see the FFF FIFA fan fest area, and you see the Corniche strips will have also many activities running in the same time, and uh, the fan fest itself will operate in the group phase 16 hours per day, and in the other uh, phases uh, 12 hours. So you see the Corniche area, the central Doha areas, where the red one, the red zone is only for pedestrians. All other areas will be restricted movement for vehicles. And you see it will provide, uh, the, the country will provide park and ride space and shuttle bus service and park and walk. 
So also we will have three fan zones, one in the north, one in the middle with 5,000 for the families and one the, the, in the industrial areas for the workers with 50,000 uh, spectators. So this is, you see in this map, uh, the location uh, of the activities, uh, official activities. So, so in total, we will have about 170 location with activities for the, uh, for the World Cup in 2022. And you see here, this is in many of these locations will operate in the same day and the same time. So here, a small impression how it looks like in uh, central Doha. You see here the crowds, how it moves. This is in normal, this is uh, at the Corneche, uh, in normal day or on Eid holidays or national day. And uh, this area is close to Souk Waghif. And uh, here it's also in the night when we have fireworks, the people at the Corneche. This is Souk Waghif itself. It's, uh, pop, uh, it's um, popular and it's um, a must visit for, for especially for the tourists and also for the residents. And there are uh, many, uh, there are many uh, uh, activities, culture activities and festivals and music. And uh, it's running uh, the, the whole day, the whole time uh, during, also it's planned to have such events uh, during also the World Cup. Qatar is also the next one. It's very close also to the central Doha area, to the Corniche area. Also, with, it's very popular for the residents and visitors. And we'll have here maybe about 30,000 people uh, here visiting Qatar or the events. And it's uh, very popular. Um, as you see here, it's planned with the, in the theater area planned. As I said, we'll have maybe more than 20,000 people. So you see here an, uh, also a spare public viewing, uh, thousands of people gathering there to watch the public viewing or to go uh, uh, in the park. This is very close to the Khalifa International Stadium. And this is, you see the spectators coming from the uh, metro station directly to the, to the stadiums. And the distance between here, it's about maybe 200 meter only. And you see here the egress, spectator egress from the stadiums as I said, within 30 minutes, we have to clear 40,000 directly to the last mile uh, through the gates and then to, uh, to the uh, metro stations and to the uh, bus hubs. And we have, of course, the bottleneck will be uh, at the transport nodes to clear the people. They are coming in one time to clear the people with the available capacity in the metro and uh, bus service. You see this is al Wakra station, how it looks like inside the station. This is a normal day, it's on Friday. And you can imagine if you have the visitors from outside. Uh, here's the fan zone, we have small experience with fan zone in the Football Club World Cup in 2019. And we have here the um, fan zone will be for 80,000. The old one was only for 5,000 people. So how we uh, manage or how we control the crowd movements during the World Cup Champions days, championship days uh, between the stadiums and different locations, yeah? and especially in Central Doha. So first, just for example here, so please concentrate with me. This is uh, uh, not easy. Uh, if we have one day in November uh, 22, uh, the, in the group phase and we have stadium cluster A, this is Lucille Stadium, Education City Stadium, Al Janoub and Ras Al Abud. The capacity of these four stadiums will be 200,000 people. And if we consider now the fan fest with 80,000, Katara with 30,000, Supwa with 30,000, so we'll have, we will have 345,000 people in one day. We have to serve 345,000 people in one day. Of course, not all of them, they are moving in the same time, in the same hour, but they are moving in one day from A to B, from stadium to another, or to the central Doha, or to the fan fest, and so on. And you see here the distance between the stadiums and the fan uh, fest. The distance here is less than 30 kilometers. It means so you can go by car uh, uh, within one, within half hour to reach the another stadiums or uh, the fan fest, uh, exceptionally the distance between Lucille and Al Janoub, it maybe will take one hour. 
but all another distance within half hour you will be in other places. This is the advantage also from the World Cup in Qatar that uh, the spectators can visit uh, two games uh, in one day in, in, in from, and they travel from one stadium to another one. And also in addition to this, we have business as usual. We have the normal people, the normal residents are traveling and moving from one place to another one. This is another scenario. Uh, what is the impact on the fan fest itself? So I assumed that these 32 countries are qualified to the, uh, to the World Cup 2022. Maybe your country is one of these. So, and I assumed here uh, also numbers of supporters for these uh, teams, for these countries. Okay, the supporters from outside countries will be about 210 spectators. Okay, and if we have one uh, um, in one day, so the, in the group phase, we have four games, eight teams. The supporter of these eight teams will go to the stadiums and maybe half of them or uh, uh, 40,000 or 20,000 will go after that to the fan fest or to Central Doha. So if we consider also that the, 20, the other 24 teams, they have also supporters, yeah? And these supporters, they, uh, they are maybe 120,000 uh, people. So if we said half of them, they will go to Qatar or they, they, they are, what should, they, what should they do in, in, in Qatar? So they will go to the fan fest or go to the uh, uh, activities in, in Central Doha. So at least we will have about 100,000 to 130,000 going to the fan fest or to Central Doha. As you know, the capacity of the fan fest itself is 80,000. So we have to redirect the flow for about 20,000 to 50,000 to another location. And we have to control it, of course, from the original. So how we manage or how we plan the uh, pedestrians movement, we have two ways. We have the first one organized with, uh, as we do it for the stadium, for the fan fest, with the uh, uh, numbers, with the uh, uh, queuing system, queuing analysis, and so on. This is clear for us. We know the numbers. We know that how many tickets sold, and so on. We can organize this. And the another one is the unorganized. We don't know from where they are coming. We can assume that. And we will have, of course, floor congestion. So for this year, we plan, or we should plan, so uh, a system, a model uh, for 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 Qatar, for especially for Central Doha, to, and to put all inputs inside, from the pedestrians number, the traffic, the metro, the bus, and put it in the system and throw the uh, schedule of the uh, tournament and also the opening time and so on, and the metro uh, time operation. Uh, we should put all these inputs and uh, play the scenarios and to have a forecast um, uh, forecast planning to see where it could be happened and also in the same time to have a real-time operation and monitoring to redirect the flow uh, uh, on time in, in the right place to the right place. This is, but this is a very complicated optimization model and it needs a special one for Qatar. We have one for the traffic with VISM and so on. We should integrate also the pedestrians movement in the available programs. So one example here in Zurich in Switzerland, how they organize a big event with a hundred of thousand people. They are doing uh, this here, measuring the crowd conditions using smartphone sensors to estimate safety relevant characteristics like the crowd movement, movement facility, density, turbulence, and crowd pressure. And you see here, you can do it for the whole city in one time, but you can, due, due to the real-time monitoring, you can concentrate in, in one place if you have very high density, and you can zoom out this here and take the right measure to redirect the flow or to release the situation. This is one example from Kuala Lumpur. I don't know if it is organized or not organized, but this is you must, you see how the um, uh, people moved. This is a very, very fast motions, but uh, and uh, in the same time, the traffic. And uh, at one time they will open, they will keep 
um, the streets only for the pedestrians and the problem is not here. The problem is the destination when they arrive there, how we can serve them uh, if they arrive at the destination. So the host country transport also provided a mobility plan for the World Cup, uh, of course, uh, concentrated on the uh, uh, public transportation with metro and buses. And the metro is serving directly five stadiums and three other stadiums will be served with buses and uh, uh, shuttle buses uh, between the metro stations and the stadiums. And as you see here, we have the red line with capacity at uh, uh, 24,000 uh, per hour per direction. They could arrive in Sherib station in one time, 24,000. And also the green line and the gold line, they have capacity 10,000 person per hour by direction. Yeah? This must be confirmed. This is the plan for the, uh, for the World Cup. But we have to uh, now organize and to balance the capacity for these numbers, for the station itself, but also from the sta between the, sta the, the stations. Let us see here this one. This is an example for one metro station at Khalifa Stadium. And you see here, this is the facilities of the stations. So the first one is the stadium walking path. This is from the stadium to the station. It's the last mile. And we have there, uh, we can control the flow from there to the station. Then they enter the station with the queuing system. And you see here the numbers are the capacity uh, for, from, from these internets. We can control the flow through these capacities. Inside the station, we have the stairs, escalators, walkway, underpass. We have the ticketing gates. We have the platform itself. And you see all this here, we should send the people to serve the bottleneck, the 10,000 people per hour. As you know, uh, maybe 20,000 will use the metro to reach the stadium. And um, within 30 minutes, they will leave the stadium. The capacity is uh, 10,000 per hour, so I cannot put 20,000 in one time within 30 minutes in the, in the station. So I have to dispatch the people, to control the people, uh, to control the flow, and this we can do it with the queuing system in the front of the stadium. It's very important to know that after the game, people, they have to wait to enter, to, to ride the train. They have to wait because uh, the, the capacity of the metro. If we do the balance for this station, okay, but we have to consider the balance between the other station, the station before and the station after, and also to consider the main station in Musharib where all three lines are uh, arrived in, the, in one station. So now we come to the crowd management and crowd control. I don't know if you know the difference between control and management. So uh, the crowd is, of course, the pedestrians are moving or they are uh, uh, standing or sitting in the stadiums. This is the crowd in general. And the crowd management is, uh, of course, a systematic planning and much as that ensure safe and comfortable movements and gathering at the venues. The crowd control is uh, control and in Arabic we can uh, translate it to two, uh, two names control at tahakkum and control at saitara In English, is the, the same, but in Arabic, we have two translations. So the crowd control uh, uh, is uh, measures that ensure restriction or limitation of crew's behavior with control procedure to enforce order, to use power, and with the aim to retain the abnormal crowd situation to normal situation. So what is, the, what is the, the relation? What is the overlap between crowd management and crowd control? So the overlap, it normally it's happened within two minutes. Yeah? It's normally you have here people moving at one gate and you have congestion at the internet and fall, people fall down or you have stampedes, then you translate the crowd management to crowd control and you have immediately to interfere to avoid uh, disaster or stampedes. So you see in this uh, uh, slide, the crowd management is green. It's like uh, the traffic light. It's green, it's normal situation. And if you see as, uh, of course, the police, the security people, they should monitor the whole situation the whole time. Because as I said, within minutes, they have to interfere. So after that, 
uh, if something happened, abnormal situation, so the police, the normal police with normal uniform is taking uh, uh, care of it to take the order and the crowd management team must be follow the order of the security staff. If we have violence or we have uh, uh, disorder, so we have to interfere with forces, with security forces and equipment. And after we uh, solve the problem, we move back to crowd control. And after that, to uh, hand over this to the crowd management team. So what is the volume of this whole operation? So you know, the crowd management, it starts before the event and after the, the event, and it takes the whole time, the whole volume is normal crowd management. You see, I like this here, nothing has happened. It's, they are organizing the, the movement of the people perfectly. It's, we don't want to interfere. But if we interfere here with crowd control or right control, the right control is the smallest one, because they interfere maybe for one hour, but they are working maybe if, uh, 16 hours. So, but the impact or the, of the uh, uh, right control is the opposite of these illustrations. So, so the impact of that maybe they fight with people, maybe some people died or uh, anyway. So, and, uh, and the public order management is of course 24 hours all the time. So crowd control on the streets, how we will do it, or how do it, we uh, evaluate the experience, especially in England and Germany. And you see here uh, the uh, crowd control will be by police, uh, will be enforced by police personnel without use force, with only police uniform. And they use the whole equipment, uh, personnel, uh, mountain police or cars uh, or, or crowd control barriers. And uh, the situation required um, crowd control like the normal police uh, maintain the normal state or escorting fan groups from the streets until the stadiums uh, or we need to have uh, fan segregations or changing of the plan, closed streets or redirect the flow if we have crowd panic or if we have outbreaks of right among the crowd. So using the police uh, forces to control the crowd. So the working strategy uh, showed by uh, the first lecture today uh, is of course to have a decision by the strategic commander, by the gold commander, and the tactical uh, decision uh, will be taken by the silver commander, either to manage the crowds peacefully or for police interfere in case of disorder. Uh, these are the um, cases where we have disorder like uh, uh, unlawful uh, assembly or illegal behavior or right. And the aim of the intervention with forces is to intervention to save lives and to maintain the public safety, facilitate the flow or restrict the movement or contain the crowds or disappears the crowd. So you see example here from Germany, how uh, the police escort the uh, one, one uh, fan group. Of course, the number of the people, it depends on the uh, level of the risk. Uh, if, it's, uh, uh, if we have hooligans or we have ultras and we estimate uh, also uh, fighting with another groups and so on, so the number of the police will be higher than a peaceful, normal game. And you see here how the working progress uh, to uh, escort such a groups. Of course, first of all, first of all, we have to identify and to know the behavior of the fans. This is very important and the background of the game, of the fans, and so on. And also, due to this, we can define the risk le uh, levels, and we should know, and this, you see the uh, blue man here, they are, like, they are coordinator with the leaders of the, uh, of the groups itself, of the fans. Yeah, they have, you have to coordinate them, you have to fix the route, to fix the time, and to give the instruction, and so on. And also, uh, the pedestrian safety is the top, so we have to clear the streets from cars and uh, also um, to control the route uh, of the fence by human security walls or mountain police or cars. And uh, direct coordination, as I said, and segregation is important, and we have to be uh, ready for any violence or uh, anti right uh, cases.
So this is a model. This is we, as I said, we evaluate England and Germany how they escort the, the groups from uh, uh, from the city until the stadiums. And this is here. Uh, we can use it also for Qatar. And you see here which department from the police are uh, interfere in this one, like the normal police from Minister of Interior, the internal forces, Lahuiya, the traffic police, the Al Faza police, uh, with with cars, with uh, mountain, with with horses, and so on. One example: How many person we need to uh, from from the security people to save uh, the movement of the fence from the city to the stadiums? Here are two examples. Yeah, one of them is. Uh, the game between Germany and Netherlands. And uh, we had uh, the stadium capacity is 52,000. And uh, the spectator from uh, Netherlands were 4,000. And we have 500 hooligans. OK, and the security staff from the German security was 1,200. And we have private security in the stadium, 600 people. And the 600 people are fixed in the stadium. For each stadium, the uh, private security, the stewards are fixed inside and around the stadiums. Uh, another example for risk very high, a derby uh, game between Hamburg and Sao Pauli. And you see the security staff. This is the example what you saw in the video. Yeah, we have 5,000 uh, uh, fans from uh, Hamburg is far. And uh, the police need 2,200 people to escort them and to save the situation. Of course, this is very important. Uh, for the for the operation, the police, especially here in this case, they are saving the event, and they are starting from the original the movement of the spectators until they reach the stadium. They are no different to see. Okay, we have now uh, uh, Central Doha uh, police and uh, regiment and uh, also responsible area. Yeah, and we have another responsible area is the last mile, and another is responsible area is the stadium itself. For the German police, it's one. They have one commander starting from central Doha until the stadium. Um, okay. So one example how we can do it for Qatar, if we choose the Dutch, the Netherlands uh, supporters, and uh, we, of course, of course organize this uh, with, with their representatives with their leader to collect them all, together them for a party uh, at, at uh, the Museum of Islamic Art in the garden there. So we collect about 5,000 supporters. Yeah, and then we move them from uh, the uh, Islamic Art uh, garden to Ras Al Abud Stadium. The distance will be 4.5 kilometers. Yeah, it takes maybe uh, one and a half to two hours walking. And we have to escort now 5,000 people from uh, the Islamic art, uh, gardens until Ras Abud. And this is tradition by the Holland fans. They, they, they did it in, in, in Brazil, in Germany, in, um, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, they collecting them together. They're gathering in one place, uh, now, uh, the party. And after that, they move as a one block from the city center to the stadium. And they have these tradition buses. They send this bus in advance. They transported per ship to Brazil. And they uh, meet there. And they went together to the stadium. Uh, yeah, and this is the procedure how we can do it in Doha. All these 170 events, yeah, as you saw in the first lecture, yeah, are controlled and monitored and organized and managed by the Security and Safety Operation Committee in the Tournament Control Center. And the operation progress for this is the working uh, already started with the integration and coordination of plans and locations. We are, uh, are planning with the pre-event preparation, spiritual and temporal spectator flow prediction model, and uh, the monitoring itself we uh, to collect the all information and conservation spectator data from all resources and uh, we have a forecasting uh, system uh, with the real-time prediction flow and uh, to react if something happened. Yeah, uh, to I am concentrating only on the crowd control. So to uh, flow redirection or implement one-way system or to um, the dynamic scaling of public transport capacity like closing roads, opening roads, redirection, or closing stations, or stop the... Uh, 
movement of cars or buses and so on. And of course, it needs uh, a special stuff and to dis the distribute this stuff in the right location to interfere within minimum time to the uh, spot. Uh, this is here, I think, from my side. Thank you all for your attention.